Nice to meet you, uh, Nathan. Right now. For the audience who don't know about Mommy's Best Games yet, uh, could, you, could you introduce the studio to us? Could you introduce uh, who you are? Sure. So my name is Nathan Fouts. I run Mommy's Best Games. Uh, before that, I worked on Postal 2. I worked on Resistance, Fall of Man, um, some Ratchet and Clank games, uh, even a Duke Nukem game, an Austin Powers game at one point that got canceled. So I've been around the industry for a long time, since about 1998. And I actually went uh, independent in 2007. And so we were indie uh, pretty early on. Our thing is a little different than a lot of indie companies that make action games. So we're 2D, action game focused, um, but I make sure to always put something original, honestly original in the gameplay. You know what I mean? I don't come up with a whole new genre. What I like to do is take something that I like to play and add or contribute to the, to the genre. Right, right. You know, I I, that's that's quite uh, apparent in especially uh, shoot one up, shoot one up the X, but even uh, uh, pig eat ball. I, I played that uh, some time nice. ago. Yeah, it, it, it struck me as something familiar yet what exactly the thing you're saying. It it it's different uh, in in some way or form. So, yeah. so how, how big how big of a team you have? Well, it's mainly me uh, making the games. Um, my wife actually does our books and um, she helps with the finances and that, all that sort of thing. But she actually contributes to design as well sometimes. It depends on the game. Um, we actually made a, a couple mobile, mobile games for a while there. I tried, I tried free to play. And we made a, um, we made a really original auto runner. Um, it's called Finger Derpy. And what's cool about it is you, you, you control little horses or other animals and you tap but you, you tap your fingers to make them run. So that was my wife's idea, was it was like you were running on your right. you know, on your mobile device. It's really cool. Um, and the really crazy control part of the game that throws everybody off, but it's intentional, is it's, it's like your little fingers are the hooves, of the two front you know, hooves, but when you, you actually go opposite the way you think you're gonna go. So your little creature is always, you're always barely steering and barely, that's, so that's, that's like the gameplay, you know what I mean? That's the originality to the game that I think's really, I haven't seen it otherwise. And so I'm really proud of that. So that's like, like you say with Piggy Ball, um, basically it was, the original concept for Piggy Ball was, what if Pac-Man got fatter exactly. in the maze? It, it is, it like, what do you like do? Pac-Man, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, and so then from there, it just exploded where it was just like, okay, uh, we can create all kinds of interesting new problems. And it was always like, in Piggy Ball, you solve the maze when you eat all the balls. That's Pac-Man right. also. You know, it's the same as Pac-Man. The crazy part is you can lose some of the balls in Piggy Ball. You have to barf them out and then, you know, squeeze down to size and you get fatter. And we just, I had a, that, was, that game was a bit of a kitchen, kitchen sink. I mean, but I'm so proud of the original uh, kernel, you know, the concept. Um, that game was very much like a, like a Super Mario Galaxy Star game, Super Mario Odyssey, where I just love the Mario games when you get into a new level, and it's just got its own little chunk of gameplay. Right. You know what I mean? And there's something new to solve in that. And I love looking at a level and just being, in, you know, just like, you're so excited. Like, what is going to happen in this level? You know, Th through the years, we've made, you know, different ones. But, you know, we've always tried to contribute something new to the action style. I think that that is actually uh, quite successful with your games. Um, so if I if I understand correctly, you, you're like the programmer, designer, uh, you, you basically do everything, including the music. So the one thing I can't do is music. <laughs> yeah, I'm not musical. I love music, and I, I am very opinionated on music. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I can't produce it. So fortunately, we have a really talented musician, um, Hamdia Ayanovic, and he's really talented. And he's made he made the piggy ball music and um, all our shoot went up music. He made the you know the kind of the loungy techno and. Um, Kind of, yeah, the trance, that's what I asked for on that one. In Explosion Aid, we've got just heavy metal rock, which I just love, heavy metal style music. And um, so, yeah, he did all the music. Um, but um, for basically all the games, I do design, original concepts, the art. I, I, so I'm, I'm basically, I'm an artist, I'm not a musician. Um, and then I also do the programming. So for Triple A, the Triple A time, I, you make more money as a programmer, and so I was always a programmer to get paid. 
Um, but I can also draw and paint. I love painting. I love oil painting and like classical painting. And um, actually, I like still lifes a lot. So I think that's that's a that's a very easy segue to uh, shoot one up. So I was wondering, like looking at the game, it feels kind of um, futuristic, dystopian. I mean, they're, they're like killer whales laying <laughs> dead, sleeping. Not sure what they're doing there, and like these mechanical beings. I couldn't help but wonder what are the origins of uh, Shoot One. So the gameplay origin <clears throat> came from it was a experimental game challenge. And I think it was by the guys, one of the guys that did World of Goo, um, one of the designers behind that. He had this fun little experimental gameplay challenge. He called it a seven-day challenge, and they would give a theme. I can't even remember what the theme was. It was something like multiple. Something like that. And that's where I just was like, I just came up with it. I was just like, oh my gosh. And I've never seen it otherwise. And and what's interesting about Shoot One Up that people, some people get and some people don't until they play it. They always say, what's my main ship? What, do I, what am I protecting? And that's right. always been in every other shoot em up. Absolutely. That I can say for certain is there's always a main ship and you've got options or you know planks or stuff like that. And what's cool about shoot one up is you're you're all those ships, and those are all your one ups all the time. And so you know you can get up to like you know 30 is the max in, in single player mode. Um, and it's interesting, that, but they just they die in different spots on the screen. You know what I mean? So you do, and sometimes you're you're protecting kind of two areas here, and the bullets are flying. So, but you can bring it back together for control. So, so speaking of gameplay, uh, the thing I like about shoot one up is that. Uh, contrary to a lot of uh, shoot 'em ups where you can only su succeed in the game if you like stay alive, keep collecting your power ups and make your way through the game. The thing about shoot one up is that I can pick it up at any time, like day and night literally, like when I'm a little bit tired I just can play it or when I'm like super excited I can play it, doesn't matter. It's yeah. it's it's like made for everyone, not just the uh, shmup expert. Mm, I, I was wondering, is that like a conscious design, or uh, did that happen by, by like happenstance, or how did that come about? The balance for the game is basically exactly intentional, the way you described it. Um, I'm glad it worked out. Like <laughs> that was the idea. Was um, schmucks, the schmuck community and the culture is very inclusive and shrinking. Like we're literally all just getting older and dying. It's like the Catholic Church or something. I don't know. Like, so it, there's a need to reach out and bring more people in, and um, that was my idea. Was like to create a more accessible shooter that wasn't curvy and like a kids-looking game, but just right. to make it like, I mean, you know, it's gross and weird-looking, so it's not going to appeal to everybody. But like, hopefully, more action fans, people that are like action fans, and sort of like like. Basically, like I'm 45, and so when I play a game at night, um, I have to be on my game, like you said, like on my toes. And so I got that Turbo Graphics Mini collection on that little console. Sweet, love it. It's so many good shoot 'em ups, and a lot I never got to play, and I didn't own the machine at the time. So, um, Lords of Thunder, love it, so good. But I literally can't play it at night. Like I'm not together enough to do it. Right. And I, I have made it a routine to play it on Saturday mornings at about 11 a.m. When I, when I get the TV from the kids, like when I can, I play it. Okay. And I play like maybe one sitting through or two if I'm going crazy. And I've slowly made it to the last level, but it's taken months. You know what I mean? And so it's super yeah, fun. I, know what you <laughs> I love that game, it's so cool. Um, it's, I, I think it's just perfect, uh, but it's a certain type of game. I also reached out. And so I, I talked to them and just kind of talked to different disabled gamers and I was like, what is in games? What helps? And um, my takeaways that I now put in every game is gameplay speed options. Ah, right. And so the one thing I, I do intentionally is I lock you out of the leaderboard if you mess with the gameplay speed, but I give it to you for single player. Right. And I love it. Like you can take, you can slow the game down or speed it up. So it benefits all gamers, but it also benefits disabled, you know, and lets you slow down and stuff, so I'm glad it worked out. I think one of the surprising aspects is that Shoot 1-Up is, is 
specifically designed to be played with multiple ships, right? You have your one, your, your three ships, I believe, you start with, and you right. keep collecting those one-ups uh, if, if, well, <laughs> if you're good enough, and you can expand up to 30 ships, I believe. Uh, right. my, <laughs> I was at 29, and then I lost like four of them because I got overconfident, right? I, I was about to hit that 30 and uh, went down the drain. Uh, so much for that run. So the, the <laughs> thing is that it plays great with multiple ships, um, but I've also tried that that um, uh, mode in which you have only one one ship. You can't Four get track. more, right? You only Four keep yeah. power-ups. Yeah. Um, the surprising aspect about it is that even that mode still holds up really well. Like It's not nice. a game that fails if you take away what other people might call a gimmick, right? So it shows that the gameplay is actually uh, working out really, really well in either cases. Um, so I was very, very happy to see that. Thanks. I mean, I worked on the balance on that pretty hard to get score track. That was hard to make score track fun. What's also hard is when you're down to one ship in the regular mode, one or two ships. Right. There's a whole balance, a couple kind of graphs I do to get it to be playable and fun when you have 30 ships versus two or one. Right. What I was wondering um, is that you, you created Shoot 1-Up. What was the reason in like <clears throat> digging up the game, making it into a deluxe version and putting it out again, in, instead of, for example, make a sequel, like, I don't know, a Shoot 2-Up or... It originally started on Xbox 360. Right. And I made four games for that system. So it started with Weapon of Choice, Shoot 1-Up, Explosion Aid, and then Game Type. And I released all those games I did a slightly improved version, I put those on Steam, and then now we started the campaign to get them on the consoles again. I always think of like, um, I guess, posterity, like a legacy. I don't like to poop things out and just, Leave you know, that was a big part of it. And then when I looked at Shoot One Up in particular, it, I had multiple enemies and half-working prototype chunks of bosses and things not ever made. So I had some kind of content laying around, so then I started getting that working, and then I ended up adding like a dozen extra enemies, you know what I mean? So I was like really happy with it. The only bad news is, um, our musician, Hamdiya, is really good, but he's since had a family. And so we have new musical tracks coming to the game. Oh, come, still game, coming. Yeah, they just didn't make it in. And it was just like, you know, with the COVID thing and the whole year, um, like we started this port in January of 2020. For the Switch. For the Switch. Uh, and now it's on Xbox One, and then we finally made it to Sony, and um, I'm not going to lay everything on 2020, um, but, you know, all... the whole supply line is slow. Obviously, like, yeah. You know, the com console people were slower, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the kids are homeschooled, like, you're, you're learning or whatever. Everything's slowed down. Um, so it slowed down at our plans. We had a plan. <laughs> To have all three games out by November uh, the last year, you know what I mean? But that was, it was gone. <laughs> um, so, but it's still know, coming, yeah? Yeah, the, yeah the, the secret is Explosion ADX is going to be the next game we announce. And honestly, I'm going to announce it next week. <laughs> the good news is, um, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, what's that? Thanks for the scoop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm announcing it here first. So yeah, we are working on the other games and um, adding new content to Explosion Aid. Um, so yeah, just trying to... You know, I, I tell that to young indie devs too, like, just make everything you make special. I hope uh, to get them into a patch, and with any luck, we could get a physical version. We'll see. Yeah? Yeah. It's, it's uh, with, with some, like, strictly limited games, or East Asia Soft, or how are you going to... Um, I would love um, Limited Run. That would be awesome. They actually published our game, uh, Pig Eat Ball, on PS4, bit, uh, physical. Basically, uh, you know, if we can get it with the new soundtrack, uh, I think it'd be awesome. It would be a really nice game, so we'll see. I'm gonna round this up, uh, uh, Nathan, but I do want to know, what are your personal uh, favorite shoot 'em ups All-time favorite shoot 'em up is, right. in America, it's called Lightning Force, Thunder Force 4. So, um, it's not Lightning Force. It's, when you look on the box, it's Lightning Force, which makes, it sounds funny. But anyway, uh, you know, Technosoft, they're amazing. 
Um, loved Thunder Force 2. I'll go Rogue and say Thunder Force 3 is not my favorite. I know that's a lot of people's favorites, and I don't know why, but it never hit me right. Everything's too big. Like, it's big and fast. And anyway, I, I, I'm not trying to sway anybody's opinion on it. It just didn't. I just also don't like the big plant design boss in the first level. Don't, don't love it. So anyway, Thunder Force 4 is, is my favorite. There's a lot of the pieces. Gary's got Gary's on the Sega Genesis is also awesome. Um, <clears throat> R-Type, I have to just jump back to that one. Um, probably original. Our type's so good. Um, it's just, I love the, I kind of love the um, puzzle levels. You know what I mean? Like it's like it's like a puzzle level where you, like I can think back to level five in our type one, when the enemies are just pouring down. Right. And you're just like, okay, I've tried everything. I don't know what to do here. You know what I mean? And you literally have to solve a puzzle to get through it in your life. But it's an action game. It's not a puzzle. Yeah, I love it. Anyway, so our type. Um, other, uh, Gradius 5 is pretty amazing. Sorry, which? Uh, Gradius 5 yeah. on the PlayStation 2. It's a little bland, I think, in terms of art. It's a little plain looking. I don't know, but um, level design and enemies, I uh, just think it's fantastic. Um, let's see here. And then, like, freaky games, um, there's a. Uh, there's that. Hold on, let me just. What is it called? I'm trying to think of. I don't know, um, Toaniki. I'm so it's such a dummy. C H O Toaniki. Um, definitely look that one up if you've never seen it. Um, it's amazing. So it's not very playable, but it's really inspired. Um, I also like Fantasy Zone, um, the Sega games. Um, and then one of my favorite running guns is uh, Ranger X on the Sega Genesis. And then the other big one is um, Granada. It's another Sega Genesis game. It's a tanking, top-down view. I would call it a shooter. It's debatable, but you control the scrolling. You know what I mean? Um, Granada, I think it's fantastic too. And um, yeah, what about yours? What were a couple of yours favorites? I recently came into contact with the guys behind um, the Endstream Arcade streaming service. Okay. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. It's like they have this streaming service of retro games, and and it has. Uh, a lot of those shoot 'em ups of, of like the golden days, uh, arcade mm -hmm. shoot 'em ups of um, mm -hmm. uh, Taito, SNK, uh, Saikyo, if I pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, Saikyo, yeah. Like all those. Yeah. Taito is probably my favorite just because of Darius, but yeah, Saikyo is amazing. Yeah, I mean, like, like amazing. Strikers. Amazing. The Strikers right? games. The Strikers, like 1945 and stuff, and Strikers 1945 2 and 3. Oh, those are really cool. Yeah, the Gunbird. Nice. Um, yeah, I like those. Was it the Dragon, Dragon something? Yeah. From them. There's there's a couple yeah from Psycho made a made a yeah. Dragon like, Blaze something like that. There. Yeah, yeah. So cool. I'm I'm making my way through those because I've missed nice. out on a lot of them. So cool. right now it's just like all over the place. I haven't finished any of them, but yeah yeah. Like getting Sam getting the yeah. Yeah, same point. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Nathan. Um, Thank you. It's awesome connecting. It's just yeah. cool talking about games. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, I hope people are picking up a uh, shoot one up the X because, like I said, I really enjoy picking it up every now and then. Thanks. Let's stay in touch. I'm looking forward to yeah. uh, the other titles, Explosion Aid, Weapon of Choice, and uh, maybe we can have another interview uh, when those games drop. Sounds good. Thank you so much for talking. Thank you so much for joining the channel, man. Have okay. a good day. Yep, you too. Bye.